Hallelujah. Wonderful, powerful things that God is doing. We're just doing Matthew 7 and verse 13. Enter by the what? Narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. So it makes it easier to lead to destruction, isn't it? And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. This narrow gate is called a pathway. I want to say pathway. It is the pathway to his glory. You know, many people don't even understand what the glory of the Lord is. They say, oh, glory and whatever, but they really don't understand it. And then John 14, if you'll go there for a minute. There's a pathway to everything. God has a certain standard that must be reached so something can be fulfilled. There's a pathway to healing. There's a pathway to deliverance. There's a pathway to freedom. There's a pathway. God has a pathway for everything. That's why he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because knowledge is the pathway to many things God has predestined and set for us. In John 14 and verse 5, and Thomas said to Jesus, said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And what did Jesus say to him? I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through, except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Jesus said, I am the pathway to the glory of the Father. What is the glory of the Father? Glory. You know, we talk about God's presence and so forth, but glory, the glory of God, is the manifestation of his personal presence. You know, there's an area where you give him glory, which is the highest honor and of praise and worship. It's the highest honor. You give him glory in everything that's happening. But the glory of the Lord is a manifestation of his personal presence. The three major presence of God. There is the omnipresence of God. Amen. There is the touch of his presence. And then there's a manifestation of his personal presence. And that is by revelation and worship. And Acts 17, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship. Of your what? Worship. I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. Can you worship something you don't know? No. So it's nothing but an act. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth 
and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So that they should what? Seek the Lord in hope that they might go out for him and find him. Though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. We live and move and have our being. That's his omnipresence. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his what? Offsprings. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by the art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God is overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. And repentance activates the blood of Jesus. Does everybody get it? When you repent, you are activating the blood. And the blood always goes before the spirit. So that's why it's important before you come here that you repent. Amen? You're whitewashed by the blood. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. We live, move, and have our being, existence. We have our being, we have our, have our existence, and it's omnipresence. Again, there's the omnipresence, there's a touch of his presence. So when we gather together and worship and so forth, people can get touched by his presence. But there's a manifestation of his personal presence by revelation of who he is as the great I am. And in that personal presence is only revealed to you personally. That is called glory. It is his personal presence called glory. When I called out of the Lord, my visitation from the Lord, I was, had a personal manifestation presence of his glory. I was baptized in the cloud of glory. In Psalm 100, and you start at verse 1. Make a joy, joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Are we the lands? He's talking about all you people. Yeah. Make a joyful shout. A shout. Amen. That means something's got to come out of your mouth. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. That's, these are pathways. This is the pathway. He says what? Enter in through what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with what? Praise. So you got thanksgiving, you got praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to what? All generations. So we come before him with singing, not humming, not chanting, and not in silence. This is the pathway to his glory. You can cry all you want, scream out all you want, and ask God to show you his glory. It ain't going to happen until you follow the pathway. Hallelujah. Come before him with singing. Again, not humming or chanting. Enter the gates with what? Thanksgiving. He's given us a pathway or what we might call the road map. Now, Thanksgiving relates to God's goodness and mercy. Okay, write this down. Thanksgiving relates to what? God's goodness and mercy. Then it says praise. Praise relates to God's greatness. So when we praise him, we are praising him because of his greatness. You know, his greatness is beyond our comprehension. In other words, when you look at all creation and the earth and the moon and the planets, I mean, that's greatness. So we praise him because of his greatness. And worship relates to his holiness by revelation. You can't worship God without revelation of who he truly is. And you'll never get to that glory place. 
Worship relates to his holiness by revelation beyond the unseen. And then you go into his glory. Manifested personal presence. That's why, remember he says, seek my face. When you enter into the glory, the, when God releases or allows you into his personal presence, you see his face. Is everybody okay? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5. One of the things God, remember, this is the year of crossover. And what's he trying to get us to a place of crossover into his glory? It takes humbleness. It takes surrender. It takes denying yourself and your eyes off of yourself. Let's speak it. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine of darkness, and has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the what? Face of Jesus Christ. That's why he says, seek my face. Whose face are you seeking? Jesus'. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen? We are hard-pressed on every side, not yet crushed. We are perplexed, but not yet in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So the glory of God is in the what? Face of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus came with the manifested personal presence of God the Father. Is everybody okay? Psalm 95, verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Amen. With what? Thanks. Let us shout joyfully to him with what? Psalms. So he's saying, come before me singing psalms. Thanksgiving. Amen. It's the pathway, isn't it? Enter the gates with thanksgiving. It relates to God's goodness and mercy. It says here, for the Lord is the what? Great God. Praise represents his greatness. Amen? So thanksgiving represents his goodness and mercy. Uh, praise represents his greatness. <clears throat> For the Lord is the great God and great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is, is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us now what? Worship. So we had thanksgiving. Amen? We have praise, now we have worship. This is the pathway to his glory. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. Wow. So thanksgiving to goodness, mercy. Now, one of the things that um, we come entering thanksgiving, so well, thanksgiving and praise Cleanses the atmosphere. It does what? Cleanses the atmosphere. And that's what he says, sing with Psalms. He said, worship, worship, worship into his glory by what? Revelation. Okay, so I'm going to start again at uh, verse 8. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. As in the day of trial in the wilderness. In other words, what is he saying? Don't reject my invitation. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray where? In their hearts. And they do not know my ways. In other words, they don't know the pathway. So I swore my rest they shall not enter. I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my what? My rest. 
I can only encourage you, don't reject the invitation of the Lord. Amen. In Romans 12. And I'll never forget when the Lord said to me, he said, uh, do you want a new life or do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol? I, I, I said, I want a new life. And he said, show me. Here I was expecting, oh, okay, I'll get a new life. Yeah, cool. Here. But he said, show me. Show me. Show me you want a new life. And the visitation came 30 days later, around that time. Because I did whatever it took. I saw it. I prayed. I did whatever it took. Romans 12, verse 1. Let's speak it, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your what? Your body is a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. We are bringing a living sacrifice of praise and worship. Does everybody get it? He's requiring that if you want to go into the pathway to his glory. Then it says in verse 2, what does it say? And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, of, the resetting of your thoughts. Understand the pathways that I have placed before you. That you may prove that which is good, which is acceptable and perfect will of God. We are bringing a living sacrifice of praise and worship and we need to come into a place where we're resetting our thinking. And we need to think on that, on that way. What? Learning the past. Remember, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You ask and don't receive because you what? You ask amiss. 1 Thessalonians 2. Someone gave you a hundred thousand dollar check, you'd find a pathway to a bank real quick. <laughs> no matter what happened, you'd run, hitchhike, call somebody, whatever. It's amazing that people just that they're not that excited to the pathway to God's glory, where there's the greatest fulfillment. In fact, it is the only fulfillment, everything else is temporary. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? 10 through 12. You are witnesses in, in God also how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we have behaved, before our, be, behaved ourselves among you who believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. That you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his what? His own kingdom and his own glory or his own what? Personal presence. His own personal presence. Called you, invited you into his kingdom and his personal presence through the roadmap or pathway that he's given us. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind or your thoughts on above, things of above, not on the things of what? The earth, especially yourself. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him where? In glory, which is his what? Personal presence. Hallelujah. Therefore put to death your what? Your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Ooh. So he's warning, he's saying. When he appears, we appear with him in his manifested personal presence. But he warns us, be careful. Where you set your mind, where you set your desires. Not putting yourself first, but putting kingdom first. Ephesians chapter 1, 15.
says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Glory, the Father of his personal presence may give you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. In other words, worship. Worship cannot be established until there is revelation of who he is. And then worship always brings us into his glory. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Where? In the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who lives in all in all. Remember, we are the body of Christ and members in the body. Amen? He is the father of glory, his manifested personal presence. Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, personal manifestation, manifestation, presence. His personal presence in us. That's why you must reach the glory of God. That's why you've got to get to the pathway of the glory of God. Amen? For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Oh, yeah. Who are they? Us. Amen. For creation was subjected to facility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, which is us. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. The glory of his personal presence in us. <laughs> Again, all creation awaits for the release <laughs> of their carnality bondage into the glorious hands of the children of God. Exodus 33, verse 17. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your what? Your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will be compassionate on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. Why? Because Jesus had not come yet. Amen? Because Jesus was carrying the what? The face of God's glory. And nobody had been washed by the blood yet. They have made sacrifices of animals, but not the blood of God. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? They get this? Hallelujah. Uh, and verse 20, but you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. 
So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cliff of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. In other words, what's his glory? His personal manifested presence. So what do you get it? Moses said, show me your glory. <laughs> But there was no sacrifice of Jesus yet. No, he was, so he wasn't washed by the blood. He cannot, that could not be accomplished by just animal sacrifice. It would be the blood of God. But now you and I can. Now we can enter into the glory of the Lord through worship. And enter into that place with his personal presence revealed to you. Personally. There has been times when his personal presence is overwhelmed. I know myself. I know that he has come, and while I was worshiping, he came and hugged me multiple times. There's been times when he said I couldn't resist because we drew his presence. And John chapter 4, 19 And the woman said to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you, G and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So if you're an individual that's truly seeking the Lord and want to see his glory or his personal manifested manifested presence in your life you must be one who must be a worshiper that truly seeks him truly seeks him not out of the mind but out of the heart amen and you must have revelation that he is the great I am there's got to be revelation of who he really is and God is willing to give it to anyone that's willing to seek him Amen. What about the woman that had the issue of blood? Remember for 20 years or 18 years, whatever it was, and she spent all her money and she was dying. She was constantly bleeding and she crawled through a, a crowd. That was the pathway. <laughs> and she touched the hem of Jesus and got healed. But she didn't give up. She pressed through. And, and glory came from him. The glory his personal manifested, ma manifested presence was drawn from him, and she got healed. Does everybody get this? See, nothing is impossible. The whole thing is there's a pathway to everything with the, with the kingdom of God, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Romans 1, in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attru attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into a what? An image. 
made like corruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Why? Because they never reached the glory of God. They never crossed over to the glory of God. Verse 24, therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts and dishonor to their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creatures rather than the Creator who is blessed forever and ever and ever. In Acts chapter 3, in verse 19, let's speak it. Repent! Why? The blood goes before the Spirit. Therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Again, we have reached the time in the year where God says it's time to cross over. And that crossover is available for everyone. Or is anyone here that did not hear the message, the word for 2023? When was it? Sunday? Well, make sure you grab this sheet. It's all on here. Hallelujah. Because it is the time of the year of crossover. And we want to definitely enter into the glory of God. Why? Because all of creation is waiting for his glory to manifest through us. Amen? So that's why here's another pathway. Think of this. Jesus said, if anyone who wants to come after me, he must what? Deny himself. Pick up the cross and what? Follow. Deny himself. That, <laughs> amen. Pick up the cross and follow. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies, grace, and faithfulness. And we ask, Lord, that what's been released tonight would be an impartation to each and every one of us that we may follow the pathway to your glory, that we may see your face, and that we may come to the end of ourselves so your glorious presence can live in us, manifest in us, flow through us, and the world may see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.